Yeah, hi, welcome. Thanks, it's a great honor to be able to speak here. Um, I want to present to you a project that we've done with um, Formula D Interactive um, in, uh, for a client uh, um, IDP International Budget Partnership, and we were very lucky to get this client. Um, it uh, combines games and learning, which has come, become quite a, you know, um, a buzzword around. You know, games for change um, um, has you know, a high potential. I want to just show you that one project you know, to uh, lay that out. This is how games started. This is basically Steve Russell at MIT Lab. Uh, the first video game about this 1962 uh, at MIT Lab, and it was called Space Wars. Uh, the computer that ran this game was about the size of an entire building. And uh, yeah, we've come a long way from that, but uh, thanks to these uh, people. So now games are all over. And, uh, and everybody's playing games um, on, on different levels. There's simulation games, there's multiplayer games, there's ego shooters, there's uh, strategy games. Um, <clears throat> games are um, usually used for um, very nasty things like killing each other and <laughs> shooting. And, uh, and uh, we just you know, find that, um, you know, uh, just a quick um, example here, uh, how powerful and how important in terms of economically games have become. They've literally overtaken Hollywood in terms of uh, uh, the actual sales revenue. Um, uh, you can see that uh, for uh, 2012, there's a forecast of what, and I promise this is the last statistic slide that I show you, uh, 68, 000, uh, 68 million. International Budget Partnership has approached us, um, again, very lucky to have a client like this very design agency. It's a civil society organization dealing with um, um, advocating um, budget, uh, teaching people how to monitor budgets of their governments. And I'm going to show you a little video clip that introduces this client. And then later on, I'll tell you, tell you about the solution that we offer to them. Essentially what all of us as organizations try to do is try and ensure that the way in which government raises and spends its money is more transparent and that opportunities are created throughout the process of the government producing the budget for citizens to monitor and influence that process. And people have the right to information in general. This is the people's money. And, and that very basic notion is at the core of all this. People have the right to know. When we start looking at budgets, there are two reactions. People um, are afraid, oh my God, budgets, how can we ask about money? But also there is another reaction which is a lot of excitement. This can open a lot of possibilities. So we thought, you know, they're asking us, um, they want to create an e-learning program. Does anybody know what an e-learning program is? It's really, really boring. So we decided, uh, let's combine a game with a learning program. And um, we came up with a, a two hour long, uh, you know, if you play it from the beginning to the end, a two hour long um, a learning game that people would connect with uh, online. and. Um, being able to, um, you know, learn about how they, in their civil society organizations, sorry, the game is basically directed at civil society organizations around the globe who deal with budget advocacy work and give them the teaching materials um, and the uh, knowledge and know-how um, how they can actually uh, monitor the uh, governments to, to be able to do, uh, you know, service delivery and all that. So the game, Gotta watch a little bit the slides. Okay. So the game starts basically with a um, you gotta log in, you gotta go to a website, and you um, you take the role of an intern in um, or, well you you're visiting this um, um, hypothetical or this this uh, uh, fictional country um, which is called Polarus, and um, and you starting as an intern in this country. You arrive there at night, and um, yeah, and then um, okay. So after you uh, basically uh, uh, logged in, you arrive um, at, at the country. Uh, you arrive on the map. You go um, 
to um, um, Capital State, which um, where you're welcomed by your new employer. You're starting as an intern as a civil society organization, and it takes you through these um, uh, virtual landscapes, which are mainly illustrated, and um, and then uh, once you settled in, you actually um, you were assigned your first task. So I'm just going to talk. I think there's a little bit of video performance problem, but it. I'm just going to talk you through the game on the side. Maybe we can start the next video, maybe that runs. Um, so once you um, once, once you arrive in the in the office um, at Sealand headquarters, that's the fictional um, um, civil society organization, you assigned a new uh, your first task. You gotta go out to a state, find um, uh, go to a school um, and find out why there are no textbooks. Um, you find out by interviewing a whole lot of people by clicking on them and uh, they give you information. And at the end, you got to file a report and send that back and uh, uh, with, with your solution. So the whole game, it's like it, it uh, goes with this pattern. You have to investigate a problem um, and make the right connections and then report back, go through a multiple choice um, game or, or do other little tasks. And, um, okay, here's an example of the, of kind of, this is office environment, this is your boss when you play the game, so it's also quite incentive. <laughs> and, um, yeah, so, um, essentially, uh, you learn a lot about budget advocacy work by playing the game, so the, the, the idea is really that you, um, that you have fun, and at the same time, um, you get you get the message. Um, okay, what else have we got? Yeah, here's an example of, um, of of a little game that we created, which basically explains the the budget uh, cycle. How a budget starts from uh, is basically from the revenue. You know, um, uh, a formula. Let's say a budget is formulated. And then by answering these questions, you actually get the machine rolling. So you, you learn here how the different, through cabinet approval and audits and so on, how the budget actually uh, uh, works and goes through this cycle until it essentially, you know, ends up in spinning the big wheel of service delivery. So I really need my slides. <laughs> um, so okay, so there's a, a in the game there's a, like a communication device with this cell phone. So this basically the way you're interacting with uh, with the with the with the gameplay. If you need help, so there's uh, occasionally there's the cell phone popping up. There's also um, uh, another device, which is a passport, which basically keeps track on um, on your user stats, on your, uh, your your player, what you what you gained, and what you uh, where you are in the game. The whole system is also connected to a um, to a to a back end, uh, which basically allows um, the um, um, an admin to to um, do you know follow ups on on user progress and also to uh, for for various user data to be, be, be tracked and um, uh, and also to be able, for example, to connect with the community of users that, um, that uh, may engage with the game. All right, and essentially maybe I'll just say, I think um, this is just an example of um, what, you know, one example of what can be done with uh, using um, a game mechanics in terms of to to, uh, to to educate people. But I think the the field is very, you know, open now for a whole lot of other, you know, things. How can we maybe um, engage like the gaming use games for to teach sustainability? How can we use games to, um, um, you know, spur innovation and and challenge people? Obviously, we have to think about you know distribution of games in. South Africa. Uh, not everybody's got a computer, so maybe we have to. Not maybe we have definitely have to think a lot about mobile devices, and um, yeah. So I think there's a, a great opportunity. There's a lot more to do in these uh, this section. I think just closing here. Thanks very much. <laughs>